This film was sponsored in part by the warm generosity of Rabbi and Mrs. David Krinsky and an anonymous friend of mikvah.org. Welcome to the Mikvah. The Mikvah, a place that has been historically discreet, yet one of the most important structures for a Torah observant life. The Mikvah is the single most essential component of a Jewish community. Mikvah is a mitzvah that belongs to every single Jew. It is our heritage, it is our past, and it is our future. It is beautiful, basic, and essential. People are surprised to learn that if a community cannot afford to build both a mikvah and maintain a synagogue, the mikvah takes priority. If necessary, we can pray in someone's living room. And if necessary, we may even sell a Torah in order to build the mikvah. So what is a mikvah and what makes it so very important? Mikvah is a mitzvah, a commandment that is crucial to Judaism as pivotal as the Passover Seder, the Shabbat candles, or anything else you may already know about Jewish law and tradition. It is the cornerstone of Judaism. Because the practice of mikvah is so discreet, it has not been openly discussed in the past, and unfortunately, may not be as well known today as it was years ago. It is up to us, here and now, to reclaim the practice of this often misunderstood mitzvah. Let's learn about mikvah together. Let us explore the what, the who, the when, how, and why of mikvah today. What is a mikvah? Mikvah means gathering in Hebrew. A mikvah is a collection of water. The word mikvah refers literally to a gathering of water. The mikvah water itself must fulfill two major requirements to be valid according to Jewish law. The first requirement is that it must be natural water from a source such as rainwater or a natural spring. This water must be gathered in a very specific manner so that the natural status is not invalidated by human intervention. Not every lake, stream, or river falls into this category, however. These seemingly natural bodies of water may be man-made or have other considerations that render them invalid for use as a mikvah. Their status as a mikvah needs to be determined by an Orthodox rabbi of Jewish law who is competent in this domain. The second requirement is size. The actual immersion pool of the mikvah must contain a minimum of approximately 198 gallons, 40 seya, of water. This is the size determined by Jewish law, halakha, that will allow the average human body to immerse all at once. It is imperative that a person is able to completely immerse him or herself and be totally surrounded by the mikvah water. That's what a mikvah is. Can an Olympic-sized swimming pool be used as a mikvah? Of course not. It is indeed large enough. However, it is not built according to the exact halachic requirements necessary to be considered a kosher mikvah, nor is the water it contains from a natural source. As already mentioned, the water used in the mikvah must have a natural source. Rainwater is generally used in the construction of an indoor mikvah. When the actual immersion pool of the mikvah is being filled with water, we can see how all of this works. Most mikvahs have an excellent filtering system that keeps the water clean, clear, and pristine. Every time the mikvah immersion pool is drained, the walls are disinfected and it is then refilled with pure, clean tap water. So where is this natural water we have told you about? Do you see the black hole on the bottom of the immersion area? If you would run down the stairs and put your hand into that opening, your hand would enter a rainwater reservoir, the bar that lies directly beneath this immersion chamber. This rainwater reservoir is what constitutes the natural component of this mikvah. The rainwater reservoir is almost equal in size to the immersion pool area, 
While the minimum size would be approximately 198 gallons, most mikvahos are more generous and exceed the minimum size required. The rainwater stored here was collected and stored in the bar of this mikvah, but not all in one day. Once a mikvah is constructed according to exact halachic specifications, the first thing that is done is to collect the rainwater into this special reservoir. It is vital that the rainwater flow only through channels that cannot be considered a vessel. Rainwater flowing down to the reservoir through a pipe or other vessel that can contain it without leaking or spoilage would be stripped of its natural status. Sometimes a PVC pipe that is open at both the top and the bottom ends is used. These openings ensure that the pipe does not become a container. The pipe then extends all the way to the roof. When the rainwater reservoir of the mikvah is filled, whether for the very first time at its opening or any time thereafter when the rainwater is changed, fresh rainwater comes down directly through this channel and flows into the rainwater chamber through that hole. It can take anywhere from three to five months or more, depending upon the season and the rainfall at any particular time, for the mikvah rainwater reservoir to completely fill. The rainwater reservoir is then capped off and the immersion chamber is refilled with fresh city water. The opening from the immersion chamber to the rainwater reservoir is the juncture where the two waters meet, or kiss. Once the immersion chamber is filled, the cap on the rainwater reservoir is removed, allowing the two waters to kiss, have contact, thereby bestowing natural status upon the water used for the actual immersion. We don't immerse our bodies in the rainwater directly, but the fact that the waters mingle and kiss is sufficient. This is how an indoor mikvah can be built with natural water. This is significantly more convenient than using an ocean, for example. This framework of Jewish law, arranged by the geniuses of the Talmud, makes mikvah so much more accessible and convenient. The mikvah we see here, with the rainwater reservoir, the bar, located beneath the immersion pool, is the preferred method for a Chabad mikvah. Because the rainwater is cold, surprisingly little dilution occurs, and the rainwater remains intact for quite some time. A timer on this particular drain system prevents the water from emptying below floor level, thus dredging up the precious rainwater. The rainwater is then able to remain down in its chamber, undisturbed, for as long as possible. Other mikvahs may be constructed with the rainwater reservoir on the side of the immersion chamber. The rainwater reservoir then has to be blocked off while the water from the immersion chamber is drained and refilled. This method may allow a greater amount of mixing and dilution to take place. Both methods of construction, however, are strictly kosher and in adherence with the proper laws of mikvah construction. It is imperative that even the most minute detail of indoor mikvah construction follows the halachic guidelines necessary to ensure it will indeed be fit for mikvah use in the same way as a natural outdoor body of water. Therefore, the correct construction of a mikvah requires an Orthodox rabbi who is experienced in all the details of the laws of mikvah to ensure it is built correctly. Once completed, a mikvah needs continued supervision in order for it to retain its kosher status. No structural changes or repairs may be done without the rabbi's express permission and supervision. Even calling a plumber for the plumbing of the mikvah itself requires notification of the rabbi. The mikvah, a gathering of water. Who uses the mikvah? Now that we know what a mikvah is, let's learn about who uses it. When the Holy Temple stood on the Temple Mount, the mikvah was a very important part of the workday of the Kohanim, priests, who performed the service in the Temple. Before they walked on the Temple's holy ground, they would immerse in the mikvah. Indeed, many ancient mikvahos have been uncovered in the archaeological digs surrounding the Temple Mount, attesting to its ancient historical use. There were also complex laws of spiritual purity in effect at the time of the Holy Temple that are not applicable in the exile we live in today. There were instances where a person became ritually impure 
and mikvah immersion allowed their return to a state of ritual purity. It is worthy to note here that a mikvah is also used to immerse certain new vessels for the household. The immersion prepares these pots, utensils, or dishes to be used for eating and kosher food preparation. Mikvah is used by converts as the final step in the conversion process. It is when they experience a complete shift of their spiritual path from the one with which they were born to the one they are about to embrace. Even though it takes years of study, contemplation, meeting with rabbis, and making decisions, learning and practicing Judaism beforehand, it is the immersion in the mikvah where the spiritual shift actually takes place. A spiritual rebirth occurs during that mikvah immersion, and the convert emerges from the water of the mikvah with a new soul, as a new person, much as the newborn emerges from the water of the womb. The convert then makes a blessing on the immersion, the very first mitzvah of his new Jewish life. Daily immersion in the mikvah is popular among Hasidic men before the morning prayers, before Shabbat, and Jewish holidays. Most men make an effort to go before Yom Kippur in preparation for the spirituality of the day. The use of mikvah by men is not accompanied by a blessing, since it is a minhag, a custom, not a law. If a man does not go to the mikvah, he is not failing to perform a mitzvah. His use of the mikvah is a spiritual enhancement to his performance of other holy and sacred tasks. While all of the previously mentioned uses of mikvah are part of Jewish life, the most important use of mikvah by far is by married Jewish women. Every married Jewish woman has a holy commandment to immerse at various times during her marriage, beginning with the bridal immersion before the wedding day. This immersion of the woman is accompanied by a blessing because it is a mitzvah, commandment in the Torah. The mitzvah for mikvah immersion is so precious that care has been taken that even women with special needs or physical challenges may participate in its practice. The mitzvah for Jewish people to keep the laws of mikvah and taharat hamishpacha, family purity, while married, has been entrusted to the woman. She keeps this mitzvah on behalf of herself and her husband, and its spiritual effect rests on their marriage and their children. A man cannot keep these laws without his wife's cooperation and without trusting her personal integrity and knowledge every step of the way. The Almighty gives a married Jewish woman complete trust. Her word determines the status of a couple's most intimate relationship. You now know what a mikvah is and who uses it. Let us now explain a bit more about the when, the how, and finally, the why for the use of mikvah by married women. The first opportunity a woman has to use the mikvah is in preparation for her wedding, as a bride. Once married, whenever a woman experiences any uterine bleeding, whether from menstruation, childbirth, or hormonal changes, any spotting or bleeding that she is certain is from the uterus creates a signal between the couple to put their physical relationship completely on hold until she immerses in the mikvah. This separation is for a minimum of five days as well as an additional seven days for a total of at least 12. Halacha requires a five-day minimum to be maintained even if she bleeds for fewer days. For women whose menstrual period lasts longer, the separation will be a couple of days longer. Once the menstrual period is complete, she then waits an additional week, counting each and every day until she completes a count of a full seven days. This week of waiting is a count of preparatory days, seven full days free of any uterine bleeding in preparation for the mikvah immersion. According to the Jewish calendar, each new day begins at sunset on the evening before. For example, Monday begins at sunset Sunday evening. Tuesday begins at sunset on Monday evening, and so on. A woman is permitted to go to the mikvah only after a complete count of a minimum of 12 days, 
the minimum of five for the menses and the full count of the seven additional preparatory days. She will prepare to go to mikvah just before nightfall of the seventh preparatory day. Her preparations continue after nightfall and the mikvah immersion itself takes place only after complete nightfall of the seventh day, which is actually the beginning of the eighth day, free of any uterine bleeding. All in all, there will be a minimum of 12 days, possibly 13 or 14, to allow for a woman's individual schedule before a couple can resume physical intimacy. This practice continues throughout the marriage so long as a woman continues to menstruate. Once a woman has ceased menstruation and immerses in the mikvah following her very last period or instance of uterine bleeding, she is no longer required to immerse in the mikvah again. For married women who have not kept the laws of mikvah, it is never too late to do so. Even if a woman's menses have ceased and she is past menopause, one immersion in the mikvah will elevate every future union with her husband. Her immersion at that point will retroactively honor all the years they've had together. Providing there is no further incidence of uterine bleeding, this final postmenopausal immersion is the only time she'll be required to do this mitzvah during the remaining years of her marriage. Should she remarry later in life, a woman, postmenopause, would immerse once more in the mikvah as a bride before her new marriage. How is the mikvah used? Once the time of separation has passed, the time to prepare for the immersion arrives. The woman will begin her preparations, which are quite extensive, on the day she is to immerse in the mikvah. The goal is to allow the mikvah water to surround her body completely and entirely with no intervening substances. This means removing cosmetics, nail polish, contact lenses, as well as jewelry that she may wear so often that she forgets she has it on. All these things must come off in their entirety. Women may prepare for immersion at home or in the mikvah preparation room. Wherever she is certain to be relaxed and able to perform her preparations, completely and carefully. If she prepares at home, she need only take a short shower on the mikvah premises prior to immersion. Every mikvah has a different amount of preparation rooms. Each is fully equipped with a terry robe, comb, manicure pedicure tools, and all the toiletries a woman could possibly need. Some of the newest mikvahs have a spa-like setting where a woman can have a professional manicure and pedicure with the polish only applied after her immersion. Most mikvahs today are fully equipped with everything necessary to properly prepare for immersion. Some smaller mikvahs or some overseas mikvahs may be less equipped, so women who are visiting an unfamiliar mikvah should generally call ahead and ask the mikvah attendant if everything they need will be on the premises or if they need to bring anything of their own with them. After bathing for approximately half an hour or more if needed, a woman will check every part of herself very carefully. This is the time for a woman to focus her full attention on her physical self. Many use this opportunity for breast self-exams and any other points of particular interest in the personal care of their body. No matter how busy her schedule may be, no matter how hectic her life, this time is set aside for the woman and is hers alone. Privacy and modesty are maintained even when many women in larger communities may use the mikvah on the same evening. Most mikvahs have a phone intercom system in each preparation room, allowing a discreet method of communication throughout the mikvah premises. Once a woman is fully prepared, she calls for the attendant who leads her to the mikvah room. Smaller communities may not necessarily have an intercom, but rather use a system for calling and scheduling appointments that work on a one-to-one -one basis. When a woman has bathed, showered, combed her hair, cleaned and cut her nails, carefully cleaned her teeth and is ready to immerse, she will call the attendant who then leads her to the mikvah room, fully wrapped in a nice terry robe. By the time a woman enters the mikvah room itself, she is fully prepared for her immersion. She will remove her robe and walk down the stairs into the mikvah. 
The water at its deepest point is only chest high. She immerses in the water, keeping her body loose and relaxed. No tight clenching. This allows the water to reach and surround every part of her body. She rises to the surface and recites the blessing. Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech haolam, asher kedeshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu al hatfila. Blessed are you, God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his mitzvot and commanded us concerning the immersion. Then she will immerse another time or two, or more, according to her family tradition. The attendant will call out kosher each time, and according to the Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria, a famous mystic, her words are repeated high in the heavens, announcing that this mitzvah is being performed and it is pure and good and kosher. It brings with it special merit for good and healthy children. This is a special time for a woman to pray for all her wants and needs. For at the very moment of her performance of this treasured mitzvah, the gates of heaven are open to her prayers. She then emerges from the water, returns to the preparation room, and gets dressed and ready to leave. The culmination of all this, the separation, the counting, the preparation, and the immersion in the mikvah, is for the couple to unite once again in holiness. Why mikvah? Why do we observe the mitzvah of mikvah? Because it is a mitzvah. In observance of mikvah, we are fulfilling God's will to sanctify our most intimate and sacred relationship. There appears to be no other logical explanation. It is a commandment given to us by God. We trust that His infinite wisdom holds the true why. The letters of the word tevila, immersion, when rearranged, Spell the word habitel, which means the nullification of self to the greater power of the Almighty. Words composed of the same Hebrew letters have a significance and a connection to each other. What is the connection between immersion, self-nullification, and God? A baby in the watery environment of the mother's womb is totally and completely dependent upon its mother for sustenance and survival. Likewise, a woman's complete immersion in the waters of the mikvah signifies her total nullification to the creator of the world. Through the mitzvah of immersion in the mikvah, a woman prepares a keli, a vessel, to accept her creator and his presence, thereby eliciting godliness from above and thus enabling kedusha, holiness, to permeate and envelop the union of husband and wife. This is the fundamental purpose of this mitzvah, to unite Jewish married couples in holiness. If a woman is having any kind of unusual spotting or staining that is impacting her mikvah schedule, a competent rabbinical authority should be consulted. After all, the intent of Torah, God's law, is the sanctification of the union of the couple and not increasing their separation. This world was created as a very physical one, and we are given the power to spiritually elevate it with each mitzvah that we perform. According to Hasidic philosophy and Kabbalah, the word mitzvah does not just mean commandment or good deed. Mitzvah also means connection. Everything we do is designed to connect us with God in a very seamless, whole way. A baby starts life with a brit milah, circumcision, performed on the physical body. The laws of keeping kosher connect us to God when we eat. The mitzvot are closely involved with seemingly mundane physical activities such as eating or sleeping. By saying Shema before we sleep, or washing our hands in the ritual manner before eating, we honor and bless everything we do and give it significance. We sanctify our homes, even the most beautiful home, when we put a mezuzah on the doorway. It then becomes more than just a physical possession. Our homes become places for spirituality and holiness. If we think about the complexity and detail of the Torah and Jewish law, and how it covers every aspect of our lives in great detail, we realize there would be a big hole in Judaism 
if God gave us a way to elevate everything else in our lives and in our world, but omitted the intimacy of marriage. It is natural in that sense that there are mikvah laws. Marriage is so much more than having a joint bank account. It's more than sharing the master bedroom, and it's even more than just having a family together. Marriage that includes the mitzvah of mikvah is also a spiritual connection, a way to honor our lives together. That is really the why of mikvah. Anyone would love to be able to tell you that people who keep mikvah laws have marriages that are perfect, they never have an argument, and that all the children born of their union are smart and strong. But no one can make those promises. What the Torah does tell us is that the way to achieve spirituality in the marital relationship is for Jewish couples to follow the laws God gave us that govern this relationship. By not being casual about intimacy, by not taking it for granted, and by putting the marital relationship in this setting of mikvah practice, we have a tremendous spiritual connection. That spiritual connection is sacred, and it indeed brings blessing to the home. When you speak to women who observe mikvah, you get some very passionate and beautiful reactions about what they feel when they come here and how elevated they feel when they leave. What is so wonderful about mikvah is that the very act and the discipline of coming here and immersing oneself and then resuming that sanctified relationship with one's husband accomplishes something spiritual. People always try to find reasons for mikvah. For example, it does cause a woman to be with her husband at her most fertile time of the month. Or, it may make a marriage seem more exciting. The truth is that even if the woman is not fertile and cannot bear children, or even if mikvah doesn't make her marriage more exciting, when she comes to the mikvah and reunites with her husband, she's performing that mitzvah, a mitzvah that God gave us to sanctify our most intimate relationship and surround it with holiness and respect. We have discussed what the mikvah is, how it's constructed, who uses it, when it is used, and why Jewish couples follow the laws of mikvah. Whether the concept of mikvah is completely new to you or something you have heard whispered about without understanding its significance, we do hope we've been able to share its relevance with you and mostly its importance to the survival of the Jewish nation. As essential as it is to Torah observant life, mikvah has historically been a discreet mitzvah as it relates to the most private and intimate part of life, the relationship between a married couple. Today, however, mikvah is more widely studied. Articles are posted about mikvah in newspapers and magazines. Internet searches yield websites, photos, and information never before offered on a topic that was kept behind closed doors for centuries. For while the practice of mikvah in its essence remains a personal and private affair, the knowledge of this mitzvah must be spoken of, discussed, and learned widely. It is important to know that today's mikvahos are state-of-the-art, beautiful spa-like structures built to enhance and encourage the practice of this sacred and spiritually elevating mitzvah. Experience mikvah for yourself. Take your marriage to a new spiritual high and bring your relationship to the next level. Take the plunge. This video presentation is a brief introduction to the concept of mikvah. Proper observance of the laws of mikvah requires one-on-one -on -one study with a qualified instructor or someone knowledgeable and experienced in these matters. To learn more about the practice of the sacred mitzvah, please consult your local Chabad or Orthodox rabbi. To locate the mikvah nearest you, or for guidance and additional information, please log on to mikvah.org or email mikvah at mikvah.org.